Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is the first video of mine that you have clicked on. If you are not a regular viewer and you literally just want to see what I've bought, I will timestamp here exactly when I get into showing you the stuff. My content is not generally about hauls and shopping, it's actually usually the opposite. I am actually on a no buy this year. For the last three years I've been doing different projects to try and stop myself buying as much as I used to, to concentrate on what I already own, to use what I own, to enjoy it and not be constantly chasing after the new. So all videos are not very regular and I feel like for those regular viewers this needs to be put into context. So context is coming first and if you want to skip that and go straight to the items, the timestamp will be here on the screen so that you can go do that. For those of you who do want the context because this has been I don't know how interesting it will be for you guys, but it's been quite interesting for me. So if you've been with me for a while, you might know in 2020 I did my first no buy year. And I made a rule that I could shop on holiday and I'm not going to reiterate everything um, because you know you can go back and watch those videos about how I set my no buy year up etc. But I made a rule that I could shop on holiday because I felt that I shopped better on holiday. Um, I thought my purchases through differently to the way that I did home and I wasn't really concerned with the way that I shopped on holiday. Then this year I decided to do a no buy year again after having done my quantity controlled low buy last year and I decided to go with the same rules as I did in 2020 which involved shopping on holiday being something I could do. So I wasn't shopping at home, I was on my no buy at home but I was able to buy whilst it was on holiday. Um, but the thing is that had really worked for me in 2020 and I left 2020 feeling really like in a good place both mentally about my approach to shopping and everything but also like my savings looked really good in 2020 because I'd been on a full no buy year all year and this year I have been like plodding along being like I'm not a no buy and like you know I know I spent quite a lot of money last year when I had my low buy because what I did last year on my low buy was I really did like quality over quantity and I bought things that I really really wanted that I usually wouldn't have been able to justify buying um, and some of that I was able to buy because I had just done a no buy year in 2020 so I had a fairly robust savings account after 2020 and um, helped along as well by the fact that holidays had been cancelled and refunded in 2020 so uh, 2021 I entered in like quite a strong financial position in terms of uh, my disposable income and I bought things that I usually wouldn't have been able to justify buying. So I did have quite an expensive year in 2021 and that partly informed why I decided to do a no buy in 2022. Um, but I went with the same rules as 2020 and then I've been kind of wondering like by this sort of time in 2020 like my savings account was looking pretty good and it's currently not is the point. And it sort of hit me as I was gathering all this stuff together to film this video that that is because in 2020 holidays were an exception but we didn't go on any. So yeah, this is all stuff that theoretically could have been bought if my 2020 no buy year had gone to plan. If 2020 had been the year that I thought it would be when we started 2020, which obviously none of us got the 2020 that we thought we would get. Um, so yeah, this has been quite eye-opening. I actually thought, first of all, I'll just do a London haul today. And I gathered up the stuff I got in London and I was like, mm, I don't know if that's that interesting to look at on its own. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll get, you know, my stuff from Edinburgh in Dublin. And I went to England at kind of Easter time. And when I gathered all of that together, I was like, oh, th this, is, this is why my savings account doesn't look great. So yeah, it's been, it's been quite eye-opening and I think it's, it's been informing of what I was thinking about doing as my sort of finance project next year. It's been, it's been a whole thing looking at all of this together and being like, oh, I have been on a no buy, but I've still accumulated all this stuff. And in 2021, because I did that quality over quantity, I, you'll see as we go through this, but I've kind of kept that mindset. But the quantity of what I bought even across uh, four holidays that I've had this year has been more than I bought in 2021 all year. Like there's not quite as individually quite as expensive uh, purchases here as some of the really expensive purchases I made last year but still with some pretty spendy purchases um, and yeah I, it's so interesting to me that I 
until I actually gathered this up today to film this, it sort of wasn't registering in my mind how much money I had actually been spending because I'd spent it on holiday and holidays were an exception. Um, and it's even more interesting in that three of those holidays have still been in Stirling. England at sort of Easter times, sort of northeast England, staying in Newcastle, but I also went to Yorkshire for the day, so that was that holiday. Then I went to Dublin, so Dublin was my one holiday that has been in Euros. Then I went to Edinburgh, which is obviously Stirling as well, and then I went to London. So it's not even as if this hadn't registered because it's been in dollars or mostly in Euros, where it might have been like, oh well, it wasn't, you weren't seeing it as pounds. Like, no, it was pounds. It was the currency that I work in day to day but it just still didn't register so I'm not I'm not going to change my no buy at this point because I've only got two more holidays well I've actually only got one booked but one that I'm working on at the moment and I don't think either of them are going to be big shopping holidays anyway so I feel like there's not much point at this point in changing it but it's just been very eye-opening because I really like everything. Uh, I thought I would maybe do a haul and a ranking video um, but I think the haul on its own will be quite long enough especially given all this chat that's happening at the start um, and yeah if I was going to do the ranking side of this video which might be next week's video there, there there's only I think one thing here that I would be like mm, if I could go back in time I might stop myself making that purchase. Everything else I really like like it's it's not I can't honestly sit and say I regret any of these purchases or regret allowing myself to make the purchases. I'm really happy with them all, but I'm not happy with the overall concept of how much I've brought in this year, and I'm not happy with the fact that I didn't even until today when I've pulled it all together that I didn't even realise how much it was. So yeah, that's been my food for thought for setting up for this video, and that is the context for going into this so I'm going to try and present the rest of this video just more talking about where I got it what my thought process was more of a traditional haul rather than going into uh, my kind of thoughts of regret or anything like that um but yeah I just for those of you who have been here for a while and who know I'm doing a no buy this year and everything like I felt we needed to have that chat before we go into the stuff but yeah let's now go into the stuff. Last year when I did my low buy year, um, I bought three dresses, is that right? Yeah, three dresses from The Vampire's Wife. Um, I absolutely love them. They are some of my favourite things that I bought last year. So when I went on my first holiday this year and was not doing my no buy, I got my fourth one. Um, so this is, I'll do, I'll put in some cutaways so that you guys can see it better. Um, but this is the day dress from The Vampire's Wife. This colour is just, I have this dress in black already. And last year they had it in a colour they were calling emerald, which was like a brighter green. And I did like it, but I just, like if somebody had bought it for me, I would have very happily owned it and worn it. Like I do, I did think it was beautiful, um, but it just wasn't quite the shade of green that makes my heart like absolutely race but this is so this is called dark green and it is it's like a sort of forest bottle green absolutely stunning doesn't fit me right now because I put a bit of weight on so and I'm, I'm doing that thing where I'm both trying to be sort of gentle with myself about the fact I've put the weight on and be like you know your worth is not defined by your dress size etc but also being like you have lovely clothes and you need to get back into them. So I can't do a cutaway with me wearing this right now, unfortunately. So yeah, that, that's going on. That's that's fun. I'm sure we've, we've all been there, um, except the very lucky people with wonderful metabolisms. But for the rest of us, I'm, I'm sure most of you will have been where I am right now. So yeah, I do. I need to shift some pounds to get back into my vampire's wife dresses. Uh, but especially this one because it is so so beautiful and yeah I love it a lot so I got the black version last year that was my first ever purchase from the brand they're just dresses that you feel so elegant in and um, you know in their high neck so like you know you, you just feel really sort of refined 
but they're still really cool because they're from, you know, the vampire's life and it's Susie Cave and Nick Cave's sort of involved and gives the dresses their names and stuff. Like, it, you know, it's it's got that sort of, um, I feel like not a cool enough person to be saying this, but like slightly rock and roll edge that just, they feel really elegant and pretty, but also like still quite cool. I feel like by calling it cool, I am blatantly showing how uncool I am, but I hope you you know you know what I'm saying here. Uh, the vibes are just immaculate with this one. It's got the frill hem down at the bottom. I love it. If I could fit it, I'd wear this every day, except I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear it to work. But I think that's what I really like about them as well is like, you feel really elegant and refined and put together, but they're not super dressy either. Um, like I got the Falconetti last year in the green that's kind of shimmery and that is definitely more of a dressed up, going out kind of dress. Uh, but the day dresses are, as the name would suggest, something, you know, you could just wear. I would wear this with tights and flat shoes. Um, and yeah, they're like, they're just, they're so perfect. I love them so much. I'm so glad that I own this. Uh, so that was my first purchase, was that I ordered that literally on the train to Newcastle because I knew that I wanted to buy this whilst I was on holiday and my no-buy was not in play. The second item that I got was another Bella Freud jumper. So again, I actually bought my first Bella Freud jumpers last year. I bought one, um, I bought the Fairy Tale of New York one in the run-up to Christmas and then when I went to London last year I bought another two. I have found that I just absolutely, they're so plain and simple. Again, probably everything I've said about the vampire's wife applies to these and that they're like they are quite casual you can wear them every day so I've been wearing them with like a midi skirt and ankle boots I really really like these jumpers this is the one that I bought in Newcastle so it's the solidarity feminine one black white writing then this one's got pink hearts on the sleeves uh, this actually needs cleaned so uh, so as I am holding it up I'm actually going to go to the dry cleaners tomorrow so you can see I've got makeup around the round the neck so th that's the only not great thing about these is that they are dry clean only less than ideal but they're very very pretty and just so easy to like throw on you don't need to think about them they're sort of effortless but they look lovely and yeah now my fourth one of these so obviously something that to me is worth the money part of the reason we went to york for the day on this holiday was to go to the mulberry outlet and i had been hoping to find an outlet bag which I did not they did not have so the outlet I think it's bags that are slightly like a small scratch or whatever like they can still be sold but they just can't be sold for full RRP and there was none of this bag in any colour in that so I just ended up a uh, it's like half the shops an outlet and half the shops just a normal shop so I got uh, this is obviously a 2021 bag but mulberry bag I suppose they probably didn't go through enough of them in 2021 so they still had them so it was like March April kind of time I think it's away it was like just before Easter but the bag I got is one that I talked about wanting last year and I ended up I didn't buy it last year I didn't commit to it do, during my year of one but I did buy it this year and you know what like I love it so much they have now discontinued it so so as I'm about to wax lyrical about this bag and you can't buy it anymore but it's the Darley shoulder so I think they're still doing some of the mini Darley shoulders eh, which is the smaller size but this is the standard Darley shoulder size and um, so this is black with I mean they're calling it gold but it's, it's kind of like brass almost I think hardware rather than gold in that sense so you can wear it like that both straps have it up on your shoulder as you would gather from the name or it does pull right through and you could just wear it as a crossbody like so. I think the reason I didn't ever commit to this last year is because it's not like a statement bag. It's just a very sort of practical everyday bag but that's, I have used this so much since buying it. I have got bags that have cost me equal to or more money than this that become like special occasion bags or they look lovely and like they maybe on the shelf like look smarter and that kind of makes my heart race a little bit more than this one does but because this one is like a sort of smooshy leather you know it's not really structured it's not really fancy 
I can shove this on with basically anything. Like if I'm wearing something that's a bit more dressed up, it's not that the bag looks so casual that it takes the outfit down or anything like that. Like it still looks smart to wear out, you know, if I was going out at night or something or like if I had a, a work event or something like that. It's still a smart bag, but it's just that bit more casual. You can throw it on, it kind of goes with anything. I love it so so much so I actually I regret not buying this last year because if I had known sooner how useful this bag was going to prove to be I would have prioritised buying more colours especially now that it's been discontinued so yeah bit bittersweet bit gutted that I didn't get my act together more quickly and buy this bag more quickly but very, very glad that I got the black one when I did. And inside it's just one big compartment. You've got a very small compartment at the front. You could like slip some papers or like if you were traveling, you could put your passport or whatever in there. Um, and then it's just one big compartment and you do have like a bit at the back with a magnetic closure. But yeah, I'm not gonna talk too much about this because discontinued, you can't buy it anymore. But so, so glad that I bought this. If you ever see this like, I, on like Vestiated or anything, love it. Highly, highly recommend this bag. Just wish I had known that sooner. I'm going through the stuff in the order that I bought it in. So the next stuff is all the beauty stuff that I bought in Newcastle. So first of all from Guerlain, I bought Mitsuko. This is actually the Eau de Toilette. I would usually buy the Eau de Parfum, but my reason for buying this is because <laughs> this I think just really outs how slightly ridiculous I am at times, they've changed the labels on this and on their blue and I don't like the new labels. So I really wanted, Mitsuko had always been sort of on my list that I would get round to it. If you're really into perfume, Mitsuko is like a reference point perfume. If you're going to have like a perfume collection, Mitsuko is one of the ones that you should own as such. Not obviously that I work in the beauty industry or should own a perfume collection but you know, it's, it's an important perfume, historically. Now what they've done is they have all the perfumes from Guerlain that used to be in the bee bottle are now in this same shape of bottle, which Mitsuko, Lure Bleu and I think um, the Petite Robe Noir perfume was in this as well. But Mitsuko and Lure Bleu always had this kind of label with this decoration round the side. So that has been changed. The new labels are sort of much more minimalist and just not as pretty in my opinion. So I decided I wanted to get Mitsuko before if there was any chance of getting an old bottle, which they didn't have the Eau de Parfum in the old bottle, but they had the Eau de Toilette. So I got my Mitsuko in the old bottle, which then matches my Lure Bleu. Well, it doesn't match it because that's a 75ml the Mitsuko. My Lure Bleu is the 100ml or whatever the sizes are. My Allure Blue is slightly bigger and it's Eau de Toilette, eh, it's Eau de Parfum rather than Eau de Toilette but once I'm finished both perfumes I think those bottles will look very nice together on a shelf. That's part of my thing with perfume is that I display the bottles when they're done so that was the other reason I really wanted the Mitsuko was that I wanted to have the two to display next to each other when they're done so yeah. A little bit of a ridiculous purchase but that was my reasoning. And then also from Guerlain, at that time, they had just released their new lipstick collection. So I have a blog post on these, so I won't go on for too long, but they released three lipsticks and they're all called by a year. So it's all inspired by Guerlain's history. Guerlain were the first brand to put lipstick in the bullet format that we know now. 1925, which is like a really bright sort of standard red. Uh, 1870 which is Rouge Imperial which is a sort of burgundy berry red and then my favourite is 1830 Rouge de Tigre which is a sort of brick not an orangey red but a sort of terracotta -y red um, I'll insert pictures of the swatches of them and I will link my blog post on these up down below if you want to go look at them in more detail and to match the lipsticks that came out Guerlain also brought out new cases so I bought two of the cases. I bought Royal Burgundy and Luxurious Garnet. So Royal Burgundy I feel like is a little bit ill named. It's closer to red than burgundy. It's brighter than I thought it was going to be but I do very much like it. And then the other one I got is Luxurious Garnet. That is definitely 
like I love that one so much. There was a third one in this collection which was a brighter red but they'd done a brighter red as part of the awesome collection last year that I then got for Christmas so uh, if you want to see that it's in the blog post again but I couldn't justify buying the brighter red from this collection because it was just so similar to the red from last year's collection so I just got the two and very very happy with them. I love Guerlain lipstick cases, I collect them which is not a great thing to be collecting when you're on a no buy but yeah they're such a little joy so got the two of them. Uh, another thing that I ordered was a ring so this was from Ottoman Hands. I feel like it's quite interesting for those of you who are regular viewers and care about my no buy low buy scenarios. I found the low buy harder than my no buy and this was my first holiday that I'd been on since re going into a no buy year and I feel like I was like ready to shop. I was really really chomping at the bit to shop again after having been allowed to shop and I would say that was kind of what I found during my low buy year was that it was more difficult to start and stop than it was to just stop and stay stopped and I think this holiday was so early in the year that I maybe hadn't quite settled into being stopped yet if I have ever settled into being stopped this year is the the thing I'm now having to confront. Um, but I bought this ring, so it's from a brand called Ottoman Hands and I got the red version of this and a pair of earrings when I was in London last year that I actually stopped at the V&A Museum um, and I just fell in love and then they didn't have the green one at the museum or maybe they did they? I think maybe they did actually and I just decided to get the red one to match the earrings but either way for whatever reason I didn't get the green one last year and then kept thinking about it um, and then ordered it when I was on this holiday so really really pleased with that. It's a sort of kind of a sort of rustic style you know it's quite imperfect. The only thing I would say about these is that they're not sized and um, so if you guys can see that I'll show you in a cutaway better but you just literally adjust this by like pulling and pushing and this isn't joined the whole way around and I feel like I don't trust myself to not pull a little bit too far and snap something off but so far I haven't broken it. I've had it for several months now and haven't broken it so fingers crossed we'll be alright. And then the last purchases that I made in Newcastle were from Gucci Beauty because they had a beautiful Gucci Beauty counter in Phoenix which had well, that was the first time that I had seen it open since I had last been in Newcastle. I got this gorgeous package, which I have kept packaged like that. Four lipsticks and then there was a gift with purchase. So I'll show you the gift with purchase stuff because it's really cute. So first of all, I got a comb. I love all these little pouches. I love the, the lining in them. So first one, comb. Secondly, there is a little eye mask. So again, the other side, the lightning is this beautiful floral, very cute. And then the third thing is a makeup bag. Um, so it's buttons, unbuttons, and then again, the inside is just this stunning floral, which I just, I'm really into Gucci Beauty. So I did my first no buy year in 2020, but I did my first beauty no buy in 2018. And basically since 2018, I've really only bought beauty products either. I've been allowed to buy my replacements for my skincare and stuff, but I've only really bought beauty products on holiday. I don't think I even, I might have made one beauty purchase in 2021 as part of my low buy year, but I just, yeah, I feel like I've really cut the cord with the beauty spending, which was, used to be really, really problematic for me. But although the cord has been cut for the most part, there are now just a sort of handful of brands that get me and, Gucci Beauty is one of them. I just, I love everything about the aesthetics of Gucci Beauty. And it is the aesthetics that draw me in. I know 100% it is. But anyway, to get the gift with purchase, I bought four lipsticks. So the first one is from the Rouge de Beauté formula. And this is the shade Lucy Dark Orange. If you're a regular viewer, you've heard me go on about this lipstick because it's like just one of my favourite things. Well, So that is that one there. Next up is the lipstick that I'm wearing just now, which is Peggy Taupe. This is one of their matte formulas. I picked a really creaky bit of the floor to stand on, so I'm so sorry if you're hearing creaks every two minutes. So that is Peggy Taupe. Then the next one is called I Dream Too Much. I've been so keen to get this last year, but 
when I'd been in London at the Gucci counter, I hadn't yet reached the counter. So very excited that this one had got through. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I really just love the name, but yeah. So it looks really bright orange in the bullet, but this is one of their wow formulas. So it's actually quite sheer. And when it's on the lips, it's even more sheer than uh, the swatch makes it look because your lip color comes through. And the last one I was really, really excited to see on counter um, is actually one of the Lunar New Year. The packaging on these just is unrivaled. So that's the Rouge de Beauty Brilliant Formula. Then the matte one is just this ridged gold. And then the Wow Formula is this beautiful floral. And then this beautiful blue floral came out for Lunar New Year. I'm sure when these launched they were an online exclusive or they were marked as an online exclusive. Um, because Lauren bought one the same one, Mildred Rosewood, that's what we both bought. And yeah, I obviously, I was on my no-buy so I couldn't buy them when they first launched online, but when I arrived at Newcastle, they were on a stand, so I was really, really excited to see them. And that is that one at the end. Lucy Dark Orange from the Rouge de Beauté formula, Peggy Taupe in the matte, and again, that's what I've got on my lips right now. Then I Dream Too Much in the Voile and Mildred Rosewood in the Voile which has a shade, uh, Mildred Rosewood is a permanent lipstick in the Vile formula, it's just that that packaging was limited edition. So if you like the shade, you can still get it online. So that was everything that I bought on my first holiday. I'm just gonna go wipe this off and then we will get into my Dublin and Edinburgh purchases. So when I went to Dublin, um, first of all, I actually ordered two pieces of jewellery which I don't have yet because they're being made to order and um, so that's actually when I say I've got two holidays that I'm thinking about for the end of this year it, one of them is actually to go to Dublin to pick these pieces of jewellery up when they're ready which will be in sort of November time um, and then I'm going to New York in December but when I was in Brown Thomas I saw this dress, I actually had to order it online because I wanted a different size to what they had. Regular viewers I'm sure are set to death of the sight of this dress because I don't think I've stopped wearing it since I bought it um, but I absolutely love it. So this is a Zimmerman piece that I first saw in Brown Thomas but I ended up buying online. It's a wrap dress, it's really really beautiful. I went on about this for absolutely ages in my London prep and pack with me video so uh, I won't talk about it for too long but yeah. Very, this is my first Zimmerman piece. I think it's beautiful, I love the colour, I love the pattern. Although it's like quite a sort of spring summer piece, I feel like because of the colour I'll be able to take it into autumn. So a few weeks after I was back from Dublin I then went on a little mini break to Edinburgh and as I said I had absolutely fallen in love with my darling shoulder, I got so much weight out of it so I bought it in another colour when I was in Edinburgh in June. And the other two colours that they had were grey and green so as I'm sure regular viewers will not be surprised to know I bought the green. Um, so green is my favourite colour, this shade of green in particular, this sort of forest bottle green like the vampire's wife dress that I started us off with. Favourite colour, this bag is just, I love it so much, I'm so sad that it's discontinued. I'm definitely sort of keeping a half eye out for the grey one, um, you know if it ever was to come up on like Vestia Collective or anything like that. I would absolutely love to have it in my life but I knew I would get more weight out of the green than the grey if it was a choice between the two so I went for the green although at this time I still didn't know they were being discontinued. Uh, so again it's that sort of brass hardware with the gold lock. Absolutely beautiful bag. Not going to talk about it for too long again because what's the point really but very very pleased with this. The second thing that I bought in Edinburgh again I won't go on about it for too long is this Alamey's dress so again uh, you saw me try this on talk you through it in my London prep and pack with me video that's actually just reminded me I got two pairs of shoes in Edinburgh that I've not brought here with me and um, I got a pair of brown sandals and a pair of wedges they were both from New Look because I just kind of think summer shoes are not worth spending a lot of money on like they just kind of get wrecked and I don't get a lot of wear from them anyway because of the weather in Scotland so they're not something I'm really willing to invest in but they're actually up in the loft now because they are proper summer shoes so 
uh, just realised I actually don't have them here to show you but I did buy two pairs of shoes as well but again they're in my London prep and pack with me video if you're desperate to go see them uh, but so was this dress from this brand Alamis I think it's an Australian brand and um, so I saw this in Harvey Nichols like I got off the escalator in Harvey Nichols and it was hanging at the end of a rail kind of across the floor and I just sort of saw it and was like like just made a beeline to it. It's a linen material, it's quite summery but again because it's got like the brown and things through it I feel like it can go a bit more into the autumn season so again still wearing it just now uh, so I feel like quite a sensible purchase and one I am very very happy with. And then the last thing that I bought in Edinburgh, when we were in Edinburgh it was just a few weeks, the the Queen's Golden Jubilee, no Platinum Jubilee, which I feel a bit macabre talking about because she died a few weeks ago um, as I think most people will know because I feel like it was worldwide news even if you're not based in the UK uh, but her jubilee was in June this year and we were actually in Dublin over the jubilee itself but a few weeks later we were in Edinburgh and the Cambridge Satchel Company had released these Corgi Curios uh, for her jubilee. Now, I'm not getting into the politics of it but I wasn't somebody who was like lining up to buy jubilee merch let's put it that way uh, but I do love corgis so it, it wasn't really about it being a jubilee purchase for me it was more just that I thought the corgi was super super cute and they're 35 pounds these curios they, they are quite expensive because I've got this is my third one they're sort of one of those ones if you're buying a bag or whatever you sort of just add it on and you don't maybe think about it as much but they are quite expensive for what is essentially a key ring um on a bag charm but this one was limited edition for the jubilee and I just thought it was super super cute so I decided to just just go for it even if it was quite a lot of money for what it actually was but it's super super cute so yeah I decided to get that I haven't actually put it on a bag yet Um, I really want the Cambridge Satchel the bowls bag the round one and um, I think this would look really really cute on the brown one of that so that's sort of my my thought process is that I'll maybe put it on that bag when I buy that at some point in the future when I'm not on a no buy. I didn't buy it whilst we were there because I'd literally like I'd just come from the Mulberry shop when I bought it so it would just it would have just felt overkill so yeah I just got the corgi but definitely want the bowls bag at some point. This is why I do no buys because I feel like it's like a snowball effect like see if I just stop shopping and I'm like I'm on a no buy and I'm not buying anything like it just stops whereas see if I buy one thing like it just goes and goes and goes and I just want more and more and more um, and I'm like I kind of got after doing the no buys and whatever like because as I say like beauty stuff I feel like I've cut the cord with and it's not really a problem anymore but general shopping like I definitely especially having gathered this stuff up today I'm like I need to cut this cord and I need to I need it to stay cut not you know do it again for a little bit for a low buy or even a holiday just stop it so but anyway that's chat for another video um so yeah we are now on to the stuff I bought in London whilst I've been in Dublin although I didn't buy them in Dublin I saw a pair of Grenson boots in Brown Thomas I actually picked them up and what really excited me about them was how lightweight they are so my walking boots that I've been wearing for the last couple of years they're from Timberland I think um, I really really like them and they're great for, for walking to work during the winter in and the snow and ice, they've got proper grip soles etc. Um, but what I've noticed is they are so heavy that at the end of the day when I take them off like I'm walking funny for a good few minutes because my feet are so used to like how much my legs must have to lift to lift the weight of those boots. So I'd seen a pair of boots in Brown Thomas um, didn't even know what the brand they were actually at first but I picked them up and the first thing I was struck by was just how lightweight they were and as it turned out they were a pair that's the wrong side of the bag there you go <laughs> they were a pair of Grenson boots now because Grenson are made in England it actually made more sense to get them at home and I wanted to obviously try them on and you know see different styles and things but I'd been perusing the website ahead of going to London and I sort of had an idea of the ones that I thought I liked but I wanted to see them in person, try them on um, because they are quite big and clumpy and I was a bit like oh, am I just going to feel like a big man in these? Like, Not that there's anything wrong with being a big man but it's not really my 
personal cup of tea um, so yeah I wasn't sure if they were for me I just was going to the shop to look at them I had had no plans to actually buy them in the shop but the ones I ended up actually getting had gone on sale so I had seen the sale ones online and I didn't think I liked these these are the ones that I ended up getting um, because these are like brown but they're like they are sort of designed and I feel like it just kind of looks like the light's hitting them differently but it is the design of the boot that the toes are darker and then it's a sort of gradient into the actual boot um, and I felt like online in the pictures that gradient looked really really stark um, or the contrast looked really really stark rather whereas it is much more of a gradient in real life I don't think you'd really notice it it just looks like the toe is a little bit darker from like where it doesn't look like it's a contrast in the same way that it kind of did in the still pictures anyway you can see them I'm doing that thing where I'm trying not to touch the bottom of them because I have worn them outside now I ended up buying these because they've gone on sale and um, so I, I did think it was more just the plain brown ones that I was interested in but I liked these much better in person than I had done on the website so I ended up purchasing them the only thing I would say so my luggage got lost on the way back from London so I didn't get them back until August but we're now at the end of September I've worked up that I could only at first walk about halfway along my road and back I do have quite a long road my road's over half a mile long so what I'm saying is essentially I could walk like a quarter of a mile in them and then my feet were blistered and I have worked it up I can now walk up to the end of my road and back so if my road's over half a mile long that's about a mile um, that I can walk in them now but that's still not very long because I walk to work well I don't walk to work I walk to the train uh, to go to work which is about a mile so I need my winter boots I need to be able to walk to the train and back which is like a mile each way so about two miles and um, plus like wear them all day so uh, still breaking them in and not sure that they're going to be broken in in time for this winter at the current moment. I had really been hoping to take them to New York. I thought they would have been perfect for walking about the city all day if I can get them to a point where they are comfortable enough for that but we are nowhere near that yet so if you've got any tips for breaking in boots please leave them down below. I have read like put them in the freezer or like heat them up with a hair dryer and stuff but I'm a bit nervous about any of that so yeah like if you've got any actual tried and tested methods particularly with Grenson boots please leave them down below. In contrast the other pair of shoes that I bought in London were these. Now I just thought these were Veja but then I watched somebody's video and they were calling them Vejas I think. Oh god so I'm really sorry if I'm pronouncing these completely wrong but it's the Veja brand is how I thought it was so don't know anyway uh, was it last year I bought my white ones or two years ago anyway basically I have a white pair of these like white canvas absolutely love them but they seem to have discontinued that style so I now like preserve them and they're my like good white canvas trainers as ridiculous as that sounds um, but anyway, I didn't used to wear a lot of black and I've started wearing black a bit more often. Probably quite linked to the fact that I really like these Bella Freud jumpers now. Um, so I've been wearing them, as I said, with midi skirts and ankle boots. But what I really wanted was a pair of black like canvas trainers to wear with them. But I don't really like all black trainers. I, I, it's just a taste thing. I saw these and I bought them. So they're just black canvas trainers. But I just, I feel like the white contrast just lifts them a little bit and just kind of, I don't know, to me, I, I just prefer, the, prefer it with the contrast rather than all black. Obviously there are loads of people who would just prefer all black so uh, I've not worn these outside yet so I'll just hold them like that. But yeah, not very exciting but that was my second shoe purchase. So as I said, I've been keeping my white Veja canvas trainers as like my good uh, white trainers and my Supergas are what I wear kind of day in, day out during the, the summer months. And I actually, I really regret not buying another pair of Supergas while I was in London because I've just had to bin two pairs. I'm down to my last pair. And I'm doing that thing where I'm like, we're about to hit the bad weather and I'm going to be wearing ankle boots and there is no point in buying them now. And if I bought them now, I'd need to buy them out of my budget because they'd be a replacement if I was buying them now. I've got other things I need to be spending my budget on in the next couple of months so 
yeah, I really regret not buying another pair of white Supergas whilst I was in London, but I didn't, but I did get a pair of black ones. Well, black canvas shoes that are not Supergas, but they're all essentially the same, let's be honest. I bought two t-shirts in Coach. I was trying not to buy very much in London unless it was something that I couldn't get elsewhere or that was like on a discount or, you know, something like that. So the Grenton boots had been on sale and um, I'd wanted black canvas trainers for ages so when I saw them and they were available I just decided to get them and um, but I got these two t-shirts on sale in coach they don't have prices on them but I'll link them up down below so the first one is white and it's got Rexy pulling the coach carriage I thought this one was quite interesting as well because it's got this like contrast stitching detail across the back obviously it's not like the real stitching of uh, the t-shirt but it's like a like decorative stitching effect look um which i thought was really really nice so that was that one i really love most of what i bought but i think of everything if there was anything i could go back in time and stop myself buying it would possibly be this because it's really quite see-through even though it's from coach which you would kind of think would be a better quality t-shirt and whatever but you'll see in the cutaways of this t-shirt like you can actually see my coat hanger right through it because it's it's pink but it does mean I need to be careful about like what bra I'm going to wear under this when I wear it and whatever so this I think is the only thing that I've bought that if I had my time again I might stop myself from buying it but it's one of those ones we weren't in London for very long we kind of had a day in each area so and I think I didn't actually buy this the first night and then I bought it later on in the holiday and yeah there was never any time to go back and return it or anything like that so uh, I've got it and I don't I'm, I'm happy to have it and I will wear it but yeah like although it was a more expensive white t-shirt it's still pretty see-through so yeah plus I don't trust myself with them I don't think I'm careful enough for them uh, but but basically there was a dinosaur in that one so that just all judgment went out the window because I can't resist a dinosaur which is also why I got the second t-shirt that I did which is this pink one with Rexy on it again so yeah again this was on sale I think these were down to 75 pounds I think they were down there's no prices but I think they were 125 down to 75 and um, so they were still expensive although they were on sale but yeah this one is a much thicker feeling material and I have a, a really similar one to this that I bought when I went to London in December last year that's grey um, with Rexy on it and again it's a kind of similar one but it's a sort of Rexy made up of different patterns not these same patterns but very very similar and that one's really thick this one's really thick but the white one is not so yeah it feels like that's the weird one to have decided to make not out of thick material but yeah very very happy with this one love a rexy moment love anything with the dinosaur on it so excited for this joni natural history museum collaboration i see i'm saying like this is what i mean like logically i am like i need to cut the cord i need to stop shopping like i'm far too into shopping again for my own comfort but i'm saying that in one hand whilst in the other hand like mentally shopping like talking about dinosaurs and i'm like have you seen this joni collection that's coming i'm so excited like you know what I mean? It's it's so difficult. But anyway, as I've said, that's chat for another video. Let us, let's get through the last few things here, which are all things that I ordered online whilst I was in London. So first of all, I ordered a dress from this brand, The Seamstress of Bloomsbury. It's a small, independent, women-owned brand. And it's this beautiful dress. I think this is called the Dog Print. So it's like navy with white. Um, it's a sort of sailor collar, little contrast love the belt it's got like a proper little belt on it rather than just like a tie that you you know have to put into a bow or whatever that comes undone super super pretty so i've wanted this for quite a while so whilst we were in london i decided to just take the plunge this is my first ever purchase from the seamstress of bloomsbury uh, but yeah i'm really really impressed i think the quality of it's absolutely beautiful the garment itself is beautiful and very very happy to have finally dipped my toe into that. On a similar sort of note of sort of vintage inspired brands, if you watch my London Prepping Pack with me, you'll see me talking about that Miss Candy Floss cord that I got for my birthday. On a side note, this is not gifts, this is stuff that I have bought this year. But yeah, so I I hate the name Miss Candy Floss, I think it's a dreadful name. 
kind of makes my skin crawl a little bit but I have loved their clothes for a really long time and um, so I got that cord for my birthday and it was beautiful it was beyond what I wanted it to be you know in terms of quality it was far beyond what I thought it was going to be so I ended up making some orders whilst I was in London and I bought more cords so the first one <laughs> is this which and exactly what I've just said about white t-shirts not being sensible enough for them probably shouldn't have bought this it is this beautiful sort of ivory they actually sell this as like a wedding outfit but I don't think it's I think you can wear it and it doesn't look like you're wearing a wedding outfit and um, so it's a little matching skirt and dress a um, not skirt and dress a uh, skirt and jacket the only thing I would say is that their sizing is small medium large the floral cord that I got that I showed in my London video I got in a medium because I measured up myself against the website and whatever and that's what it said and I would say that one's quite tight like I can wear it it's fine but it's definitely like kind of pushing at the boundaries of comfortable so I ordered larges in these and they're a little bit too big and um, so I think there is quite a gap they're not so big that they look ridiculous or anything I just I know I've got quite a lot of movement in them but yeah I think if you're short I really think you'll like these as well because the jackets are quite short and um, because they're designed to sort of sit on the waist I think they're more flattering than a lot of things that are cut to more sort of um contemporary silhouettes I suppose so yeah I think if you're short even if you don't want the cord just the blazers from this brand might be worth investigating uh, but yeah so this is the the ivory one super super pretty and you can see as well at the back here like it's all shaped in and everything so it's really really flattering on and the other one you've already seen me wearing the jacket I wore it in a video quite recently which is this one so this is a bit more casual um, sort of grey and black checked again though like the shaping on these jackets is just so so beautiful if you're you know curvy and again it's quite short so if you're quite short it's just shaped very very nicely at the back and yeah really really beautiful and then the skirt for this one is a pencil skirt so the skirt on the ivy one is like an a-line skirt I don't think I actually said that but you'll have seen in the cutaways and the skirt for this one is a pencil skirt so this is more of a sort of work cord but I think this jacket will just look really really good with like black jeans or like you know um I was going to say black leggings but that's not what I mean like black trousers but like yeah like black trousers is that like black slacks I hope you know what I'm saying I don't wear a lot of trousers I'm not down with the trouser lingo like like slim cut black cigarette pants that's what I was trying to look for there so yeah I think like I love that I've got the matching skirt but I feel like this will just look really good with just anything sort of plain black or even grey on the bottom as well. So that is the end of the clothing. The last beauty thing that I bought in London was another one of the Guerlain cases. So this is from the new collection. They had it, it was exclusive to the Covent Garden boutique just before it kind of launched nationwide in September. So I did manage to get it down there. And so these are like butterfly-like effects. So this shade is called Nymph Rose. They've got another two, which are also very pretty. So see what Santa brings. And then the last two things, just to make sure they're in this video, in case I decide to do the ranking video. Gucci Gorgeous Flora Palette and Lipstick. Super, super beautiful. I've done whole videos on each of these, so I will link up the two videos eh, in the description bar and up in the eye for you if you want to go see these in action, see them swatched, see them compared to other things that I already own, what might do them. Um, so yeah, I won't talk about these for too long, but I do need to acknowledge that these are also things that I bought this year and I used my birthday money to buy these so I didn't buy these on holiday but I used birthday money so they still were fine within my no buy and that is everything that I have bought this year so yeah given I'm on no buy it's quite a lot of stuff quite a scary amount of stuff actually particularly because I feel like I've been really controlled you know like see if you asked me what I bought on holiday this year I'd be like oh I got these mulberry bags that I really really like and like I bought my vampire's wife do you know like I feel like the things I would say, the mulberry bags, the vampire's wife dress, the Zimmerman dress, maybe the, Be the Bella Freud jumper, that's probably, if you actually asked me a 
completely unaware is having not looked at all this stuff like just off the top of my head those are the things I would remember buying as much as I love everything else and actually like have worn other things more and whatever like that's you know that's what would come off the top of my head I only actually even could gather this up because I keep a, a list and I've written everything on my spreadsheet that I've bought whilst I've been on holiday as I bought it so yeah like it's it is really quite scary I think how many purchases I have managed to make given I'm on a no buy and given if you asked me to list them I would probably list you like five or six of them when there's been evidently a lot more so yeah food for thought for those of us who are um, you know trying to control is just how how under control you can think you're being when you're actually not if you look at it like this and um, because I don't think this is particularly controlled even though it feels like that looking at it now but I certainly didn't ever feel that I was out of control making any of these purchases because they were all made on holiday and you know within the budget that I had to spend on those holidays. Anyway my camera battery is flashing at me so that's going to force me to just wrap this up and not waffle on uh, to I'm sure uh, the joy of most of you uh, so thank you very much for watching if, especially if you've made it this far to you well done that was a lot of stuff to get through I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in my next video bye